Hey guys, how you guys doing? Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this video that I put together for you. Now, in today's video, before we start today's video, I'd like to ask you to please click the subscribe button, the notification button, and the thumbs up button. It only helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. Also, maybe take a minute to join the channel. There's a join button down there too. You might want to click that one. Help a brother out, you know, if you can. It's only $1.99. It's not going to hurt you. I'm sure you spend more than that on other stuff you probably shouldn't be spending it on. But, hey, who am I to judge, right? Either way, today we're going to take a look at some immutable distros. That's right. Today's video is going to be on immutable distros. Now, what is an immutable distro? Well, immutable distro is a distribution that basically is read only. It comes with a set amount of applications that are run as a base core thing. And when it updates, it updates only the user stuff, nothing. Or if it's going to do a complete, it's going to be an atomic update, which is going to update the whole image. And the only way, if you have a problem that arises in it, is to revert back to an older image that was a predecessor to that one when it last worked. So it's not like you can go in and fix the packages because some of the some of the system, well, the system is read only usually. And the only thing I think that is in most immutable distributions that is accessible to the user is basically the user land stuff. And even then, it's not a lot of it. Um, so that's the the caveat of immutable distros they're mainly made for replication and they're also made for rolling back in like you know production environments and that kind of stuff so uh the container packages that mo most of them use are exactly that containerized packages like snaps or flat packs or even like a busy like not busy box a distro box environment where you can actually use other you know uh, package is from different package managers there, but it's only in like the user land level. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into them. The first one on today's list is going to be vanilla OS. Now to me in the list of three that I have to talk about vanilla OS by far is to me the actual weakest one on here. And the reason why is because it's still a work in progress. It's, it's a whip. For sure. Um, it says it's going to be your next operating system, but at the moment, it, it's not. I mean, it's definitely um, one of those operating systems that that is, like I said, still has a lot of work to do on it. It's, it's very, um, you know, youth. It's not. It's the youngest one of a lot of them. And it's yes, it has taken on a lot of work to do it because it's you know kind of being like like you know it's it's ubuntu and debian based so it's actually having to work with the constraint of a lot of software you know um stability and stuff not stability but um uh porting of packages and stuff like that so i mean it's it's like i said it's a work in progress but that being said it will be rock solid because it's based off of rock solid distribution. So the updates that it rolls out are going to be probably behind. Um, and it's going to be, you know, stable. So there you go. So, I mean, it, it makes, it makes the justification of using it that way. And also it uses, it's one of the ones that uses the distro box like function for, you know, do, using your apps. And it has to, because, you know, with snaps being the main thing for, ubuntu you know um they and they don't want to incorporate all those snaps and stuff like that into it you know it, it's probably better to use a distro box on it so that's kind of cool in its sense now you know as far as i've done a review on it and it's okay it like i said it's still a work in progress you know if you have used it comment down below let me know but like i said it's probably the weakest one on this entire list as far as mutable distributions are concerned so that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is going to be Fedora Silver Blue. Now, Fedora Silver Blue is 
a actually wonderful uh, uh, immutable distribution. It is one of the earliest immutable versions that came around of a traditional desktop environment, Linux desktop environment. Um, it ships with the entire uh, system provided. Uh, it is also um, one of those that will, it's kind of based like Android and Chromebook OS and Mac OS in the sense that, you know, a, a it stops a single corrupted file from actually knocking out of place and it replaces the whole images. Um, it also uses the flat pack version for, for your applications. Uh, now that being said, flat packs recently, you know, as of late has been where they're getting larger and larger, you know, in the sense of usage. So if you're looking for, you know, constraints as to, you know, which, you know, package manager you want, Flatpak might not be one for storage wise, because it, I thought the idea was that Flatpaks was supposed to include all of the dependencies in the Flatpak. But lately it's been, you notice where it's been actually downloading the Flatpak and then additional dependencies. So I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird um, in that aspect. But other than that, Silver Blue is Silver Blue is actually a pretty awesome distribution. The thing to note about Silver Blue too is, is that it uses the GNOME desktop, and one of the things that you want to do when you install is run the um, GNOME software tool and do any available updates. Now, understand it's going to update the current packages that are installed at the core level. So, at the core level, but. Nonetheless, one of the things is it may or may not work. It's kind of hit and miss on it. And that's the thing with these immutable distros. Um, a lot of the a lot of the stuff that is actually you know, you would do in a standard desktop or is just not stable there because of the immu immutability of it. You know, it, it prevents those kind of things in the auspices that it's trying to protect the core system. And so basically um, you're kind of limited sometimes on things, you know. Uh, if you do a system update using the GNOME software tool um, and it does successfully work, you're going to have to restart and do the update, you know, that way. It'll actually do, do it that way. Otherwise, you're going to have to do it on, like, the standard uh, pseudo DNF upgrade. You're actually going to have to do an upgrade. Once again, it's immutable, so you're going to have to do that. And then also you have to do the RPM Austria upgrade too for silver blue. So that being said, you know, that's the caveat to Fedora silver blue and doing its update. But other than that, it's a, it's a very well put together functional desktop environment. That's immutable. And once again, the idea of immutability is to be able to download and, inst and install one of these and use it and have things that you need already in place that normally people you know, get screwed up or buggered up and have to do wipe and reinstall on. And all you do is install and plug and play the flat packs snaps. Or, you know, if you do, you know, distro box, you know, then you can, whatever is a containerized, you know, application that you get from whatever distribution you choose to. And, you know, you know, export it into your thing and you can into your menu and you can actually use it that way. So Fedora Silver Blue is actually a pretty good and more stable one other than vanilla uh, OS to go ahead and consider using if you've used it let me know if you haven't of course and you want to let me know how that goes also if you've had issues what your fixes were comment that down below what the issue was and what it was that fixed it if you were able to fix it um so yeah go ahead and let's let, take a look at silver blue and see you know how that works for you next one we're going to talk about is probably the most famous one it's the longest one that's been around but it's actually gotten famous recently um, and it's become the latest trend slash craze in the Linux computing space. And that is going to be Nix OS. And so Nix OS, what could we say about Nix OS? Well, Nix OS has been around for decades. And it hasn't really gotten really picked up and used until recently by the masses. It has been used along the way. But it was kind of more obscure. And so what made it so famous is that it actually brought attention to itself by building a workable 
Linux system atop a Nix package manager. It uses the Nix package manager. And so basically it is a reproducible more than immutable distribution. I'd like to specify that difference in the fact that with Nix OS, yes, it's immutable, but you can still edit the immutable core system files. It's located in the system file system directory in a certain file area. You can, you know, do some, some reading in their documentation and find it. And yes, you can make edits there. That's where you make the edits and put applications to appear globally. If you want. Now, the thing that makes Nix OS so appealing and so easy to use to most people, once you understand the context of its language is that configuration file, the Nix OS config file. Now, if you're a window manager person, you will have no problems with this because as a window manager person, that is one of the things that you're actually accustomed to doing is going in and configuring different configuration files from the window manager file to like your freaking, you know, your bash files, your, your terminal files, everything. You want to set it up to look the way you want. That's what a lot of window managers do. So editing a config file is no big deal. Getting involved with Vim, you know, or Emacs or whatever to edit a config file, no big deal. Now, if you're coming over from a desktop environment, that's going to be something that you're going to have to get used to. Now, the actual config file in Nix is actually written in an actual computing language. It's not like I3, which is loosey goosey, but it's actually a computing language. So once you get the idea of doing that, and the best way to do that is as many of us, uh, uh, Linux YouTubers say, go look at somebody else's dot file. Look at the differences in the, the base file that you have, you know, the, 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 the vanilla file that you have from the, you know, system install as compared to what they did before you import it. And you'll see the differences in what they did. And you can kind of get the idea easily about how to edit that config file and where things should go. And it literally configures the entire system. And that's what makes it so rep reproducible and more so than immutable. And that's the greatest attraction to most people because you can literally reproduce this on any computer that you want, you know, and, and, and set it up very easily within minutes of, you installing it, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just fantastic. So, and to roll it back is real simple. Once you do your config file, you, you reboot, you go into the, in grub, you'll find where you can roll it back to the last file that was there. Because once you start editing and make changes and you, you build it, it'll, it'll actually save it in the, in, in your grub as you know, one that you can choose and snap shot on the environment and it'll roll it right back to it. Very easy. It's very popular, very very good um, immutable distribution. To me, it's the strongest one, the most customizable one, even though it's it's considered immutable, but it's not immutable uh, 100%. It's 95%-ish, maybe 98%-ish immutable. But because it takes, you know, some savvy to get to where it's at to change the global, you know, uh, applications and software and, you know, settings there. So that being said, yes, it is immutable, but it's, flexible immutable and it's actually a great distribution it's one that i would put to me as the number one i haven't done a video on nix os yet i've been told i need to i uh all uh Oglo, i'm going to do it if you're watching this but yes you know i am definitely going to be you know definitely telling you that of all the immutable distributions nix os is probably the one that most people should use it is wonderful to use. You can add Wayland onto it. You can put DistroBox on it. You can do all kinds of different things with it. So it's definitely one that if you haven't used, take a look at it, get into the craze, use it, abuse it, report back, soldiers. Uh, tell me what you think. So that being said, that is a look at the immutable distributions for Linux that are actually worth mentioning and actually pretty decent to use. Now, if you've used any of them, as I said in each one, please comment that down below. But before I go, I'd like to take a minute to thank my Patreons, thank my subscribers, and if you are neither a Patreon or buy me a coffee or a subscriber, hey, click the join button down below on YouTube or pop on over to buy me a coffee or 
Patreon and support me that way. It helps the channel immensely. I can't can't begin to tell you how much. I really appreciate that, and I'm humbled by it. And you could ask any of my Patreons and my subscribers. I am there for them. I am you uh, you know easily accessed through the private messages there on Patreon or buy me a coffee as well as Discord. You can get a hold of me on Discord, and I always always you know am there. Uh, but either way, peace, guys. I'll tell you to keep doing what you do. Keep on Linux and stay blessed. Have a great day. And above all, I will see you in the very next one. Looking forward to it.